So if you can please introduce yourself and tell us about your direct involvement on Reapers of Souls. Sure. So, so my name is Josh Mosquera. I'm the game director for Diablo 3 Reapers of Souls. And I was originally hired onto Blizzard to be the lead designer on the original uh, translation of Diablo 3 uh, to the console. And uh, after we shipped that, I transitioned over to the game directorship for all of Diablo. And uh, how has the development process been on the project? So what challenges have you faced along the way? So what was really great about coming on to, to Blizzard specifically to work on the console a project that our mandate was whatever changes you guys need to make to deliver the most awesome Diablo console experience to so go for it. So you know we were told whatever we need to change, you know, there's no secret cows, just make sure that it really feels like Diablo 3 on console, especially the Ultimate Medieval Edition, really feels hand-built uh, for, for the consoles. So with that in mind, how much of an influence did the feedback on the console Diablo 3 have have on Reaper of Souls? A, a tremendous amount. You know, like I said, we were allowed to we essentially give them carte blanche to change what we needed to change. And um, in the beginning, I think people were a little hesitant, first of all. Could Diablo actually work without a mouse and keyboard? How can you handle the, in the, the interface? Uh, but then when we released it on console and the overwhelming positive reception to all the changes, uh, I mean, the direct control, the cameras closer in, and especially the changes we made to the loot system, I think really allowed the team to really embrace the philosophy of dropping less but better and more epic items that eventually is what became Loot 2.0. So in some ways, the console version was Loot 1.5. Uh, so obviously co-op is a big part of Diablo 3, especially the feeling of being in it all together. Um, can you tell us about the apprentice mode and how that will affect our co-op experience? So at its heart, we feel that Diablo plays best when you're playing with other people. And one of the things we really wanted to focus on the Ultimate Evil Edition is what we call Share Your Adventures. So we have a slew of great new features um, for the console version that really emphasize this point and the apprentice mode is one of them. So this will allow players of different levels, for example you can have a level 70 character and invite me over to, you know, to play Ultimate Evil Edition but, and I can start up as a level 1 character and what we do is we boost, the game boosts my stats so that I can um, follow along with you and not you know, get my head caved in every, by every, every lowly skeleton. But it doesn't change the item game for me, like you know, level 70 items are dropping for you, level 1 items will be dropping for me, and it, so I still feel that sense of progression. You know, we do some very clever math in the background to make, to make you sort of like stay competitive, but at the same time still enjoy your, your items. And then when I finish, I can take that character back home with me and continue leveling up on, on, on my own. Uh, so can you tell us more about the Nemesis system and how that incorporate um, into our friends game? So, so the Nemesis system is probably the most devious feature we have. Um, so in a game like Diablo, your character will die from time to time. It just happens. It's a dangerous world. But the Ultimate Evil Edition, when you die, there's a chance that that monster who killed you is essentially going to level up and become a nemesis. So when this happens, if there's a, like a rift in space and time and jumps into one of my friend's games, if they're playing Ultimate Evil Edition, and uh, goes and stri tries to systematically hunt them down. So maybe the next time that for example, you log in, you might be playing normally, killing monsters, getting loot, and all of a sudden like the music's going to dim down, uh, the sounds, the music's going to come up, the lights are going to dim down, and then all of a sudden you see this rift appear, this portal, and this nemesis feature sort of come out. It's a really, like, really badass monster, but it's also going to have sort of shadows of all your friends that he's killed. Now, if you can kill him, you're going to get an awesome reward, and I'm going to get a re reward as well, but if you don't, He's going to jump into one of your other friends' games, and so on and so on. Again, this is really a great way of, like, even though we may never play together because we have different schedules, we live in different parts of the planet, but there's still this ability of, for us to share the adventure, right? And to have this sort of cool moment where, like, oh, that your nemesis came in and almost killed me, but I killed him. So, again, it's really, really fun social feature. 
so Diablo is all about your friends, as we've discussed, uh, that play alongside of you um, and their game. What does the gift in a mailbox features allow us to do? So the gift in the mailbox system, again, is one of these ways we want players to be able to play together without actually having to be together. So every time there's an, an item drops, uh, like a legendary, there's a chance that it will drop as a gift for one of your friends. So when you pick it up, you actually open up your inventory and you'll say, this is a gift for your friend. And you know it's very easy just to hit a button and mail it to them. So the next time they log in, you know they might have, you know, the, you have mail waiting, and they go to the mailbox, and it'll be a brand new legendary specifically rolled for their class. And it will say, so and so gifted you this 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 weapon. You know, happy hunting. But that's so again, it's a really cool way of, of being able to have that connection between players. And uh, so uh, Reaper of Souls introduced us to the Crusader class. Can you tell us more about this star, uh, class and what style it may suit? So, you know, when we started thinking about the class that we wanted to introduce with Reaper of Souls, you know, we really looked at the, the pantheon of the five existing classes. And we, we said we're pretty happy with all of them. I think we're hitting all the, sort of all the key archetypes. Except we noticed that when you're thinking about a dark gothic fantasy role-playing game, that there was an archetype that was missing, and that is the knight in shining armor. But of course, in the world of Diablo, nothing is shiny. So, you know, we said our version is of the knight in battle scarred armor. This sort of religious warrior who's so driven by wrath, trying to eradicate evil from, from the world of, of, of sanctuary and actually go on and defeat death itself. Now, in terms of the gameplay, we realized we didn't want a very static class, so we, we gave the Crusader this very interesting mix of both uh, spell casting, ranged abilities, and up close, like smash your head and type of ability as well. And this really allows players to really choose what type of Crusader they want to play. Uh, so will we see um, any characters from Diablo 2 make a reimagined appearance, do you think? I mean, so right now, it's really, really the, the Crusader is it. Um, I mean, obviously inspired by the Paladin from, from Diablo 2. And I know everybody, every time I get asked this question, everybody wants me to say, the Necromancer is coming back. But for now, you know, we have you know, no plans, nothing, no, nothing to announce. I think we're pretty happy with the six classes that we have. I think they, have, they range, you know, good diversity of their classes and builds. And, and I think they really do a good job of capturing that feel that we want for Diablo 3. Uh, so you've introduced the Paragon system to be able to continue to level up your character after the level cap. Uh, what's the feedback bit of this thus far and uh, what's your plans with that going forward? So, you know, one of the big changes from the original Diablo to Reaper Souls and now the Ultimate, Ultimate Evil Edition is that Paragon has no more limit to it. So you can keep gaining Paragon levels and in fact, uh, I believe it was yesterday or the day be uh, before yesterday we had our first Paragon 1000 player in the world hit that, that landmark. So I think it's been really great to see um, all the players trying to race to those, to, to those milestones um, and it, it, it was really interesting to see how, you know, how, how high they can get. Um, so earlier on we uh, touched upon the Ultimate Evil Edition. Can you tell us a little bit more about the PlayStation 4 only features within that? So for the PlayStation 4, you know, this, you know, so one thing we should say that all the versions for the Ultimate Evil Edition sort of feature the same content. You get the new class, you know, you get Acts 1 through 5, Adventure Modes, all the, all the magic that makes Diablo the end. But for PlayStation 4, we really took advantage of some of the key PlayStation 4 features, specifically the control. So one thing, it has a trackpad. So a game that has a lot of inventory management, you've actually, you're actually, you can actually use a trackpad to sort of move around your items and select the items that you want, and it feels really natural. But probably the, the one of the most subtle changes we made is when you're playing same screen co-op with your friends, every player is identified by player color around their, uh, around their character. And we're, we're able to match that color to the light bar on your controller. So, you know, when the lights are dim, you're dim because you're playing, it's a dark gothic game, you want to play with, with dim lights, you can still see whose controller is whose. When you get up and get a beer or a pizza, you always come back and, oh, the blue's my controller because my blue character is on screen. So. Um, and finally, what's your favorite class through through the entire series and and why? Why? That's, uh, you know, I have to say all right? It's, it's, like, it's like picking between your children, right? They're all my children. They're all, they're all great. But you know, I'll, I'll say it depends if I'm playing on PC or if I'm playing on console. Um, I think on PC, for some reason, I t 
tend to gravitate more towards the range classes, the demon hunter specifically, and uh, the wizard. Uh, but on console, direct control, like the fact that I have, you know, it is me controlling my character, and I can, every time I press the X button, like something, you know, spectacular happens on screen. That's why I tend to gravitate towards the Crusader and the Barbarian as my two favorite classes to play on console. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. It's great to meet you. Thank you.